Coach, what makes Jalen Wright so good after contact? The mindset more than anything else. Jalen always ran the ball with a chip on his shoulder. So when he approaches the game, you can watch him in pregame some. He's very, very intense, you know, and he prepares very intense. And you see the reflection of it on the field, the way he attacks the game, the way he attacks the preparation. Uh, when he gets the ball, he, he's kind of got that mindset, I refuse not to go down. He doesn't want to make the first guy bring him down. He, you know, he's done a lot better job this year, I feel like, of leg drive. You can see when he goes between the tackles, he's getting his feet up on contact, running those small spaces. Like the last couple of years, you will see guys bring them down with just a shoestring tackle, and that no longer really happens. One of the guys on offense was talking about how going up against your defense, how it's made them so much better, including obviously at the line of scrimmage. At what point did you guys kind of look over at the other side of the ball and say, Man, that's a good group that's going to make us better going up against them in practice. Yeah, you know, I think we, it all kind of started showing itself a little bit in the spring. Uh, when you know, when you look at the spring football practice, we always have really good, intense. We always, you know, com competitive, not combative, more than anything else. And you could see the intensity that we were practicing with in the spring. You start to kind of carry over to the fall, and then all of a sudden, we get a couple of new bodies, uh, more healthier, more than anything else. Really, on both sides of the ball, guys that weren't available in the spring. And I mean, we've had some battles out there. And it's like we always say, iron sharpens iron. And now what you see is a reflection. Uh, our, our run game is probably better just because our defense has gotten so much better, especially that defensive line unit. What is it about Jalen Wright's game that can make him so effective specifically against Alabama this weekend? Well, I think more than anything, just the diversity that he brings to the table. Uh, you can see Jalen has really worked on his pass receiving skills, and you can see now we start to do more things with him as far as throwing the ball out of the backfield. Uh, he always could do it. You know, the other guys have were a little bit further ahead. So now with that has opened up the, the window for us to do is now expose all of those guys to a lot of different things. So whether it's Jabari or Jay Wright or, or even Sampson, like now they all got very similar skill sets where we feel comfortable moving those guys around into a lot of different positions. But uh, I do think just the approach that he takes to game, he's a lot more patient as a runner. If he continues to do, be a, do a good job of being patient, like he's going to always have success no matter what defense we line up against. Coach, you, you talked going into the season about Jalen, uh, just his how much he improved as a between the tackles runner. It seems like he has a good feel for the game. He knows when to be maybe have a little patience, have a little hesitation, but also be able to put a foot in the ground and, and accelerate. How, how special is that that he's developed that kind of feel for knowing? when to start, when to stop, and how much is that helping him you know, well, you, be productive as he is? Yeah, you wish all your guys would make sure they're students of the game. And, and, and Jalen has done a really good job in the offseason and in season studying game. You know, we tease a lot of these guys a lot of times. They don't watch football. So a lot of times they can't tell you even some of the past greats that played the game because they didn't grow up watching the game as much as, you know, my generation did more than anything else. But now what you see is here's a guy. He's kind of got a throwback feel to him. He can tell you about guys like Walter Payton or, or TD or anybody like that. So it's just a mindset of like, hey, look, I want to study greats. I want to study past greats. I want to study current greats. I want to study just the game of football to see what those guys saw. Now, now, that doesn't mean it's necessarily the scheme that we do, but from a standpoint of just those small things, using the stiff arm, you can see him using that off arm as a weapon now. You can see him, like I said, get his feet up on contact. He's got that little leg kick like Peyton used to have sometimes uh, when he's trying to be patient going between the tackles on the perimeter. So it's just all those little things that have allowed him to really be special as far as understanding where the free hitters are. We talk a lot about because of our splits and how we play about where those free and those, those bodies are going to come from, whether it's safety position, whether it's that nickel position, uh, and sometimes, you know, when we're reading those guys, just kind of how to attack the leverage. I think his study of the game has really improved. And now what you've seen is he's taken that and he's applied it to Saturdays. Coach, from, you probably have a, a, as good of a vantage point to judge it as anybody. What's the return of Cooper meant to, to the run game for, for your guys? What have you seen? Man, it's been tremendous. You know, the first couple of games, you know, we were out there playing and we had some success. We, we were doing some good things. But when Coop came back, you could just see the communication level just increase. I think the confidence that he brings to the table, he makes players around him better as well because he's such a smart player. He can understand where to take the points, where to take the IDs, and then he exudes confidence in the entire offense because of what he does. And now you can see us getting to the second level, whereas, you know, at the beginning of the season, we might have, be on half a man. Uh, Coop covers up the entire body. So now he's been able to create lanes for us and it exudes confidence in not only the running backs, but also the offensive line. As Jalen has ascended, Jabari's carries have went down a little bit, but he went over 2,000 yards uh, for his career Saturday. Just kind of talk about just, just 
his overarching career and kind of how he's been um, this year kind of in a different role? Well, I just think, you know, as you grow as a program, as you grow as a person, period, uh, things start to evolve, things start to change. Uh, and Jabari's taking this deal all in stride because he always was a team first guy. He always was, had a mindset of, I want what's best for the team. Uh, you know, he understands his role more this year. It's a little bit different than it was the first two years. And he's done a really good job of playing that role. He's ready whenever we have an opportunity to call his, call his number. Uh, sometimes he has to, he's going to have to be called up on the finish games this year. They all need one another. You know, Jalen, the way we play with Sam and Jabari, the manner in which we play, I mean, it's, it's really tough to get those guys 40 and 50 snaps in the game. So some days Jabari may end up having more snaps or he may not, but just the approach that he's taking to the game this year especially, he understands the role, his role is different. Our offense is different than it was in the past, and he's really just been a complete team player. And, and just a compliment to him uh, over his career the first couple of years, he's thrust, thrust in that position where he lost two guys. When we came in the door, he had to be the guy. And then last year, had to be the guy and then continue to fight through injury. I mean, he's got a warrior mentality. Being on the staff with Joey Hawsley now as the OC, working with him, what are some things that you see in terms of attributes that he's brought to that position, including in games to help the team get better? Just the experience, you know, Joey's been in this offense probably just as long or longer than anybody uh, in that room. And he's seen so much, the diversity that he brings to the table, all his different stops and, and all the different structures that he's seen. Like he can make those halftime adjustments like nothing because he can refer back to something he might have saw two or three years ago. And then now we can make that adjustment. And him and Coach Ellaby have worked together for so long. Coach Ellaby the same way. He's kind of been on the grassroots of this offense as well. So, you know, when they get in there and, and they start talking about things that might have happened seven, eight years ago, you know, we have to, like us, me and Kelsey have to go back to the film some seven, eight years ago and try to pull it up and see exactly what's going on. But just the experience in the, in the offense and the scheme and what, and what we do, uh, he has great ideas. You know, he's a student of the game. In the offseason, we try to build like basically a library of NFL things or steal from other college programs across the country about what they do well. Uh, and he's kind of one of those guys that's always in the film room, always studying uh, to try to find different ways to put us in, in great positions. Jalen Wright seems to play quite mean. It takes several guys to bring him down. How does his toughness elevate the room? Uh, it builds uh, a lot of confidence in the entire room and an entire team. There was one specific situation uh, last game where he tried to hurl the guy, and you can see just that energy that he brought to the table. It ignited the entire offense. You know, the young man ended up getting injured. I think he ended up maybe coming back. But for the most part, it was a situation where, like, that right there, you can see our entire intensity, the way we played, the manner in which we played when we touched the ball, all of a sudden changed. It's those kind of plays. It doesn't mean it has to always be a 50-yard touchdown. It could be just be a guy going pad plus two. It could be a guy pushing the pile like you see sometimes, and that creates a, a, you know, an energy amongst the team and the fan base a lot of times when you see those kind of plays. Jerry, you, you talked a little bit last week about the, just the potential you see in Cam Seldon. What, what, what's kind of the next step in his development? You talked about earlier this year kind of where he was in learning the game. How, how far has he come there, and, and what does he still have to do in that area? Man, he, he's at a really good place right now. I, I really think that if Cam had to be thrust in that position to go out there and play and, and give us quality reps, he could. Uh, he's Once again, he's a guy that stays in the film room. You know, he's an early bird. So Cam is a guy, you know, we practice in the morning. He's basically the first one in the building all the time. You know, I don't know how much the guy really sleeps, but uh, he does a really good job of being on time. He's never missed anything. But just from the development and growth standpoint, like all young guys, the protection piece is going to be uh, critical for him to continue to develop and grow. He's not, you know, there by any stretch of the imagination. Obviously, he has the rest of the season to go, and then also, too, doing the spring ball. He has to continue to grow in that aspect, learning how to run between the tackles, being a violent runner in between the tackles, and being able to feel the bodies when they cross his face, feel when he can go ahead and take the space that, that, is, uh, that, that he has. Those kind of things right there, he's still learning and still growing in that. But I do think, like, as he continues to get more reps in practice, he's in the rotation right now. Uh, he's like the fourth back, so to speak. So. I mean, one of those guys get a hangnail like Cam Sell is the next guy up.